In this video, we'll learn how to create a complete HTML website in 15 minutes. So let's take a look at it from the top of the website. So we have our title or heading up there in the header section. Then we have our navigation uh, bar here, followed by the left section of the website with some heading text, paragraph underneath that, and then the image. And then at the bottom, we have a footer section with this about me section off to the right. Okay, so let's go back up to the top and I wanna show you how the website changes when we flex it down. So when we get down underneath 768 pixels, the main sections of the website, meaning the left column and the right column, will turn into a single column for the website. And then once we get down underneath 576 pixels, we're gonna see the navigation bar change into a vertical navigation menu rather than horizontal, which we're seeing at the full width. So let's take a final look at it here off to the right for how it's going to appear on say an iPhone 10, and then we'll see what we need to get started with the tutorial. So down from the bottom we have the footer, then the about me section, then the my mission section, then the navigation and our header at the top. So in the description of this video will be the HTML website tutorial files that you can download for free and that will include index.html. I'm going to have it open in Sublime Text, the free text editor, or you could use TextEdit if you're on a Mac or Notepad if you're on a PC, but I highly recommend the free program called Sublime Text. I'm also going to have it open in Google Chrome, which you can see here in the background as we're editing it. Also included in the starter files will be both of the images that we have here in the tutorial with the dimensions included in the images. So if you need to, go ahead and pause the video for a moment so you can download the starter files. And before we get started, I want to take a second to thank the web hosting company that I use called Bluehost for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to get your own .com name and upload your website to the internet, check out the link to Bluehost in the video description. And if you need help uploading your website to the internet, you can email me at help at macintuts.com. Let's take a look at what's already included for us here in the starter file. So we have uh, doc type HTML at the top, spanning all the way down to the bottom with our HTML tag. Then inside of our head section of the HTML document, we have the title of our website, HTML website tutorial. And then we have a style section underneath that where we'll add our CSS later where we have our website shifting from two columns to a single column and our navigation going from horizontal to vertical. Then we have the body section of the HTML document after the head section. And we already have included for us a header tag for our heading. And then we have the navigation tag followed by the left column ID and the right column ID for the about me section. Then at the very bottom of our HTML document, uh, we have the footer tag included for us already. So that's gonna give us some structure to start out with. And the first thing that we'll be adding will be the My Website text inside of the header section. So I'm gonna go ahead and start us off with a heading one tag, and we'll just write My Website. As you may know, we have heading one being the largest heading down to heading six being the smallest heading in HTML. Now let's drop down to our navigation area and we'll add our navigation links. So we'll use the A tag for our links and for the link here you could link it to your home page or index.html. I'm just going to leave the home link as well as the others blank right now with a hashtag. So we'll add the home link, then we have the my mission link, followed by the about me link underneath that. And then lastly, we have the contact me link here. Okay, so let's go ahead and refresh in Google Chrome here, and there we have our navigation links. So let's move on to the left column section of the website. Inside of our div ID row, we have div ID left column. So we'll start off with a heading two where it says my mission. And then underneath that, we use a heading four for save the saving the world with one design at a time. And to save us a little time ourselves, I'm just going to copy and paste some of the text in here. 
Then we have our paragraph section, which we use a P tag for. And I'll just paste the text in here. And then beneath that, we have our image. So we'll want to reference the image folder, and then we have 800 by 533.jpg, or JPG. So img forward slash for the image folder, for our image source, and then 800 by 533.jpg. Okay, so there we have our image beneath the headings and the paragraph. Now let's move over to the right column section where we have the heading 2 up here for the about me text. So h2 about me. And then underneath that we have our image. So image source img forward slash for the folder and then 800 by 800 dot jpeg. If you're wondering how I'm typing in the the, uh, the tags so quickly, here in Sublime Text, as we refresh and see our heading and image displaying, uh, once you see Sublime Text recognize what tag you're trying to type out, and you, all you have to do after that is press Enter, and then it will do the rest for you. Okay, so there we have our paragraph completed. Now let's drop down to our footer section, and we'll start it off with another Heading 2 tag for the Contact Me text. Then we'll drop down and add a heading 4 for our email address. So H4, and then we'll use a link here. So when people click the email address, it will prompt their email program that they're using with mail to me at website.com. And then underneath that, we have another heading 4 with the phone number here, followed by the street address. So I'll just copy and paste that in. Okay, so let's go ahead and refresh in Google Chrome. And there we have our footer content down at the bottom. So that does it for all of our HTML. Let's move up to the style section of the website and get started with a basic reset style. So we'll use the asterisk to target the HTML document itself. And we're going to use something called box sizing border box. So that's going to make it really easy for us to give percentages to the different column sections and have them display next to each other. OK, so next let's reference the body section. And we'll do a reset on our font family. So we'll say font family sans serif. And then font size, we'll make it a little larger at 110% from the original size. And then for the color, we'll make it sort of a light black, or if there's such a thing, or dark gray with 474747. And then our background is an off-white at F1, F1, F1 for the hex value. So now let's move on to our header section. So let's reference that with header here in our style section. And then let's change the background color to white. So we'll say background hex value FFF for white. And then let's give it a padding of 2% all around to give it some spacing around our heading text. OK, so now let's move down to our heading 1. And let's change the font size to 50 pixels to make it nice and large inside of our header. And let's align our text center. So text align center. OK, so now if we refresh, it's looking pretty good. Let's move down to our next heading section. So H2 and H4 will want aligned center. And that's going to take care of the rest of our headings all the way down the page centering them. Next, let's move on to our navigation. So we'll reference that with the nav tag here. So NAV, open and close your brackets. And let's give it a background color of 474747. And then we'll say overflow hidden. So we don't have any overflowing content outside of our actual nav section. Next, let's style our link. So nav A. And then we'll give them a color of white, FFF. 
and then text decoration none to get rid of the underline with the links and then let's space them out with letter spacing two pixels so that's looking pretty good and let's add some padding to it so padding 14 pixels top bottom and 16 pixels left right and then we'll say display block so with display block, that's going to make them line up vertically, and to get them horizontal, we'll say float left. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, and now we'll just add our hover effect to the navigation menu. So we'll reference the A tag again, and we're missing some padding around the body section, the gray section here off to the sides. So to get the hover effect, we'll reference the nav A tag again, and then we'll just say colon hover, and let's change the background color to a light gray with the hex value DDD, and then we'll change the color of our text to black with 000. Okay, so that's looking pretty good and just like the original. So next, let's move down to our left column section. So we'll want to reference the left column ID here so we'll use a hashtag to reference an ID instead of a period with a class and we'll say float left and then we'll give it a width of 68 percent which is a little more than two-thirds and then background color white okay so that's looking pretty good and then let's add some padding around our content So we'll say padding all around of 1%, and that looks pretty good. Now let's move over to the right column section, and after that we'll take care of the image overflowing. So we'll reference the right column again with the hashtag because it's an ID. So right column, and we'll also say float left, and we'll give it a width of 30 pixels to make room for or sorry, 30% to make room for 2% on the left. And then background color white and padding 1%. Okay, so that looks good, but as I said, we'll add a margin left of 2% to make that gray section. So margin left 2%. And then we have the gray separation, but we don't have gray separation from our navigation menu. So we'll add a margin top of 2% to both the left column section and the right column section. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then let's take care of our images that are overflowing outside of the sections. So we'll reference the IMG tag for our images, and we'll give them a width of 100% and a padding of 1%. Okay, so there we have our images fitting inside of their respective columns, but down here we have the contact me section for the footer sort of float, floating up next to our left column section. So what we'll want to do is create sort of an invisible horizontal line after our row so nothing displays in line with it. So we'll say hashtag row after content blank with the quotations and then display table and clear both. So now if we refresh we have nothing displaying directly after the row and our footer content is there and it's sort of its own section. So let's go ahead and style our footer next. So we'll reference that with the footer here and then let's give it a background color that's the same as our navigation with 474747 and our color for the text white and that looks pretty good, but we'll want some padding to separate the text from the edges. So we'll give it a padding of 2% all around. 
okay? And then we'll want some margin outside of the footer section, outside of the dark gray, so margin top 2% to separate it from the columns above it. Next, let's go ahead and take care of that email link. So since it's a link, it's showing up blue, so we'll want to reference the A tag for links with footer A, and we'll give it a color of white with FFF, and then text decoration none to take away the underline. Okay, so now if we come over and refresh, we have the full width version of our website complete with the styling, but if we drop down to underneath 768 pixels, we'll see that our columns are still taking up the relative width. So what we'll want to do is reference the right column and the left column here in max width 768 pixels. So when we go underneath that width, they'll be 100%. And then let's take away the padding with padding 0. So now if we refresh, refresh, we have our full width columns here at the iPad or cell phone width. And then once we scroll down to 576 pixels, we'll want to change our navigation menu to be 100% uh, width also. So we'll reference our nav links with nav A. And then let's just say float none instead of the float left that we have for the full width and then to center the links we'll just say text align center okay so now if we refresh there we have our center aligned links with the single column width throughout the website for tablets and cell phones okay so i'm going to flex back up and that does it for the tutorial i want to thank you for watching Please remember to like this video, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Then I'll see you in the next video. Oh.